What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add product quantities to our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add product quantities. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to add product quantities. So here we have the product page of our e-commerce site, and there's nowhere to add quantities. So if you want to buy two of these, there's no way to do that. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got my product.html file open, and it's in our templates directory of our store directory. We just want to come down here to the product price underneath. See, there's an if statement to see if it's on sale. So underneath all of that, let's just uh, put a line break or two and let's just type in stuff, right? So let's come back over here and hit reload. And here we see stuff. So that's pretty much where we want this to go. So now I'm going to open another web browser and let's go to getbootstrap.com and click on the docs and come down here to forms. And we just need a, a little bit of code here. And what we want is a select box. And that's what this thing is right here, a drop down box. So we can copy this code and bring it back over here. And <laughs> where it says stuff, I'm just gonna paste this in and tab all this stuff over. Now here we can get rid of this label. We don't really need that. And I don't want this open this select menu thing by default. So here we can change this to one, two, and three. And if we want more, so let's say we want them to be able to do five. You could select between one and five of these books at a time. So, okay, that looks good. Go ahead and save this. Now if we head back over here and hit reload, this thing stretches all the way across, which, you know, I don't love the look of that. We can play around with this a little bit. Let's go, uh, let's create a div with a class equals row. And I want to center this on the screen. So let's go justify dash content dash center. And this is straight bootstrap stuff. And inside of here, we want to div with a class of, and let's go col dash md dash two. And this is just a sizing thing here. And let's type in quantity and close that div. And then we also want another div with a class of, let's go col dash md dash two again. And then come down here to the bottom of the select statement and close that div. Now we also want to close in our row div, which is uh, this guy. And if we want to tab all this stuff over a little bit again, even it all up. All right, let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, hit reload. And oh, that still doesn't look great. Uh, let's see, what did we do? Mm, let's see, let's go to our select class here. And let's also give this a form dash select dash SM to make it small. So go ahead and save this. Let's see if that does the trick. I uh, made it a little bit smaller, but these still should be right next to each other. So what is going on here? Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> we got an equal to sign there. That should be a dash. And we hit reload and boom, here we go. So we can select any of these things and that looks pretty good. So now we need to be able to sync this up with our Ajax on the screen. So what we need to do is in our select class here, we also need to give this an ID. So let's give this an ID of uh, quantity dash cart, something like that. And go ahead and copy this. Now let's head down to the bottom of our screen where we have our Ajax. And here before we were just selecting the product ID. But now we also want to select the product underscore quantity. And this is going to be a little bit different than this because this is a select box. So what we want to do is do a dollar sign and then also the hashtag like before. But remember, we just gave this a name of quantity dash cart. And that's what we gave the ID right here. But we also have to put a space and go option colon selected. And then instead of dot val, this is going to be dot text. So this is kind of hard to read if I have it over like this. There we go. It's maybe a 
a little easier to read. There we go. So option colon selected dot text. All right, now we need a comma at the end of that. Now, whenever we click this button, it will send back whatever we've selected here and it'll send it to our cart underscore add function. So let's head over to that cart underscore add function. It's in our cart directory in our views.py. And here's our cart underscore add function. And right here, we're grabbing that product ID, but we also need to grab the quantity. So let's create a variable called product underscore quantity. And let's set that equal to, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and paste it in again. But instead of product underscore ID, this is gonna be product underscore quantity. Why? Because over here, that's what we named it, product underscore quantity, right? So that will get that, assign it to this variable. Now we need to save that. So let's come down here to our cart.add function and also pass that in. So I'm gonna create a variable called quantity and set that equal to whatever this is that we selected on the form. So that looks good, go ahead and save this. But now we need to account for this quantity thing in our cart function. So let's go to our cart.py file here in our cart directory. And down in the cart add section right here, we're passing in product, but we now also have to pass in quantity. And let's create a variable called product underscore quantity and set that equal to whatever this is of quantity. Before we were passing into our session, the product ID. So intro to Python programming is ID number three, for instance. So we would pass that three and then also this price thing. Now we don't need any of this because we already know what the price is because it's in the database. So instead of this, let me comment this out and do this again. Let's pass the product ID, but let's also just pass uh, an integer of that product quantity, which is this guy right here. Right, so if we go ahead and save this, we can see what our new session is gonna look like. So let's head back over to the website. Let's inspect our thing here, go to our storage, click on cookies and let's delete our session. So let's delete this guy. We had two things in the cart. Now, if we go home, there's nothing in the cart. So let's add some things. So let's say we want this book and we want two of them. We'll add that to the cart. And let's go, we want this book and we want say four of those and we'll add that to the cart. Now let's take a look at what our new session is gonna be looking like. So let's head back over to our terminal and control C to break out of here. And let's run Python manage.py shell. Let's go into the shell real quick. And before we do that, let's grab our new session ID. So let's go to inspect and go to, let's see, storage, click on cookies. There's our new session ID. Let's go ahead and copy that, paste it up here. So there we go, let's copy that. Now we can take that over to the terminal and we've looked at how to do this in the past. We just go from django.contrib.sessions.models. We wanna import our session and then let's create a variable and say k is equal to the session.object.get and we want the primary key of whatever our session ID is. So we can paste that in, we just copied that. And then here we can go k dot get underscore decoded to see exactly what is in our session. And here we see a four and a two and a three and a four. This is the quantity and this is the quantity, the second item next to the, the colon. The first thing is the, the book ID, the product ID. So. Python programming book is ID number four, and we've selected two of them. The other book is ID number three, and we've selected four of them. So this is our new session. And now we can use this to grab the quantity whenever we want. So let's exit out of here and let's run our server again. And let's go back to our cart page and let's add that drop down to this page and have it automatically show the quantity we've already selected, right? So let's see, let's go back to our code and I'm gonna go to our product page and let's just kind of grab all of this stuff that we just did for the drop down menu. And now let's go to our cart underscore summary page. And again, let's sort of come down here below the product price stuff and put a couple of line breaks and uh, test. 
let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, just to make sure we're in the right place. Hit reload, okay, there's test, that's right, that's where we wanna be. So instead, I'm just gonna paste in all this stuff. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and reload just to see if that looks okay. And it does, but it says one for each of these. Now we know we have two of these and four of these or vice versa, whatever it is. How do we get this stuff? Well, head back over to our code and let's go to our views.py file. And in our cart summary function, this is the function that gets called every time we go to our cart summary page, we need to make a few modifications. So I'm gonna create a variable called quantities and I'm gonna set that equal to cart dot get underscore quants. Now we don't have a get underscore quants function yet in our cart.py file. So let's go ahead and save that. Well, first I'm gonna go ahead and just for now, let's just add this to the page. So we can go like that, put a colon and like that. So that'll pass that to the page. But again, we don't have this get underscore quants function just yet. So let me copy this. Let's save this, head over to our cart.py file. And let's see, where do we want to do this? Let's just do it under our get prods function. Let's define a new one called get underscore quants. And we want to pass in self. And here I'm going to create a variable called quantities. And I'm going to set that equal to self.cart. And then I'm just going to return that. It's kind of lazy, but uh, geez, there we go. So this will grab our cart, assign it to a variable called quantities and return that. I guess we probably didn't have to do that. Like I said, a little sloppy, a little lazy, but uh, super easy. And now we have all of this stuff, this quanti these quantities on our cart summary page. So let's head over to our cart summaries page and let's come down here to this guy and we can tell this thing what to select by default. So to do that, we go option selected. And I'm just gonna type stuff for now. And we close that up. Go ahead and save that. Head back over here and hit reload. And now it says stuff as the selected item. So now we just need to change that stuff to whatever the quantity is in our cart. So we can do that by kind of looping through and, and hacking around on this a little bit. And we're gonna do it inside of here. So let me get rid of this stuff thing. And remember in our views.py file, in our cart summary, we've got this quantities thing and we passed it into the page right here. So now we can use that in the page. So let's head back over to our cart summary page. And remember, we just looked in the terminal, it's returning a dictionary with key value pairs. And they look sort of like this. And then like say two and four. So this is the product ID, this is the quantity. This is the product ID, this is the quantity. That's what's in our quantities object, I guess you would call it, not really an object. It's what's in our quantities dictionary that's from our cart. So we can loop through there, run some logic. So let's go for, and this is a dictionary. So we want the key comma value pair in our quantities dot items. And this is how you loop through, let me move this over. This is how you loop through a dictionary on a Django template page. You can call for key and value or name them anything you want, but you just call the, the quantities dot items. So dot items will get the items from the dictionary. So inside of here, actually, before we move forward, I always like to end my four so I don't forget. Inside of here, we want to do some logic. So we know this key is the first item here, and that's our product our product ID. So we can say, hey, if this product ID matches the product ID that we're sitting in right here, let's do something. So we can do that. Let's do a little logic. Let's go if the key equals our product dot ID. Now we can't just do product ID because the product ID is an integer and this key value pair is a string. So we can just turn this into an integer by calling slugify, kind of a little hack. And there we go. And again, as always, I like to end my if statement right away. So what do we wanna do? Well, if the key matches the ID, that means they're a match, right? Obviously, it means this item is the item in this list right here. And so we can just print out the value here as the quantity. So that's just value. 
So in this case, if this book is four, this will print out three. If it's not four, it won't print out three. And it'll just loop through here and do it for every item in our shopping cart. So we don't need that. And then again, we're printing this in the selected area right here. And that looks good. So let's clean this up a little bit. Put some space there. All right, so that looks good. Let's go back over here, hit reload. And now, uh oh, something has gone horribly wrong. Actually, let's go to our inspect thing. Let's go to our storage. Let's get rid of the session ID. Let's just start over. Okay, so let's go here. Let's grab this guy. Let's say we want two of those. Add to the cart. Come back over here and oh, no, still not working. So, all right, we got a typo or something. So, uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Ah, let's grab this and let's do it like this. Not sure that's the actual problem, but it's definitely probably a better way to do it. And I misspelled quantities. That's the problem. Quantities. There we go. All right, so this should work now. Head back over here, hit reload. And now we have two of these. So let's go back over here and grab this guy. And let's say we want five of those. Add to cart. Head back over here. And the quantity is five. And it works. So we sped through that very quickly. And, you know, there's probably easier ways to do this. But I don't know. This is a very kind of hacky way to do it. I like it. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so we are moving right along. We now have quantities that we can pick. When we do, they show here. Now we just need a little delete button here to delete these things. When we change our mind and want to remove something from a cart, we'll probably look at that next time. And we're moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.